بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها صدق الله العظيم Respected ulama ikram, elders, brothers, mothers, sisters, youngsters and students. Alhamdulillah, once again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this great opportunity to come and congregate and listen to the words of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One important point we have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the people himself to come to these kind of gatherings without the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can go to the masjid, no one come to, can come to the madrasa, no one can carry out any good deeds without the tawfiq, without the ability given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It reminds me of an incident where a person, he was going with his servant towards the marketplace. So whilst going to the marketplace, the azan was given and the servant, he was very punctual, he was very steadfast in his salah. And vice versa, the master, the person who was the boss, he was very neglectful. So when the azan took place, the servant, he pleaded to the master and he said, please let me go to the masjid and perform my salah and then I will join you to go to the marketplace. So obviously he pleaded a number of times. He said, okay, you go to the masjid. I will stay outside the masjid waiting for you. So quickly just read your faraz. Just finish your faraz and after you complete it, immediately come out of the masjid. So he remained outside the masjid, the boss and the servant, he came into the masjid. He performed the salah with the people and after the salah was completed, everybody started to go out. But this servant of this person, he remained inside and he continuously read salah. He was seated there doing the munajat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person, the boss, he was getting frustrated. So he says from outside the masjid, peeping into the masjid, he says, Oh Ramazani, tu ata kyuni? What's wrong with you? Why are you not coming out? So he replies back, he says, Oh, mujhe aane nahi deta. He's not letting me come out. So he's seeing that he's the only person, there's only one pair of shoes. There's nobody else, everybody else have come out of the masjid. So he says, Tujhe kon aane nahi deta? So he gives a very beautiful reply. He says, Wo jo apko bahar se andar aane nahi de rahe, wo mujhe andar se bahar aane nahi de rahe. So this is the point that we have to remember here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the tawfiq to come into the masjid but the boss, he was outside the masjid. So in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever we get this opportunity, where we can carry out good deeds, whether it's coming to the dhikr majlis, whether it's going to the masjid to perform our salah in jamaat, whether it's going to uh, listen to a lecture, whether it's going to help a Muslim brother or Muslim sister. So whenever we get this opportunity, we should always express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity. So we come here, one of the main objective is that we learn about spirituality, curing the diseased heart, one of the topic of today's. So, in this Quranic verse that I've recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying after seven qasam, وَالشَّمْسِ وَدُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا تُحَاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا This nafs which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made and he perfected. Then he says that قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا After taking seven qasam, seven oaths, seven promises, then he says that nafs which Allah has perfected. So then he says that Qad Afla, the person who has purified his nafs, he is the one who is successful. And vice versa, Waqad Khaba Man Dasaha, and the person who will be unsuccessful, who will be at loss, the person who has soiled this nafs, who has polluted this nafs, who has not utilized this nafs for the right purpose. 
So this is a very important thing that how we can actually purify this nafs. Because what's happened today, like Shah Waliullah Muhaddis Dehlavi Rahmatullahi Alayhi writes in Hujjatullahi al Baligha, in the chapter of Fitan, he says, I'lam annal fitana ala aqsam. In that he mentions different types of fitna. He says, I'lam annal fitana ala aqsam. Remember that there are different types of fitna. Then he says, Minha fitna tur wajuli fi nafsihi. There is that fitna, that trial which is within himself. And what is that? In that way that his heart becomes very hard. So it becomes so hard that he doesn't have that sweetness of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't achieve that. He doesn't feel that. That sensation that he should get after carrying out, discharging the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't get that feeling. Lazzat al munajat He doesn't find the lazzat of munajat one to one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a fitna. And we are the living statistics of this fitna. Basically, we don't want to come to the masjid. We don't want to come to recite the Holy Quran. We don't want to come to an Islamic gathering. And it's so dangerous. The Quranic verse, it says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دُنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى that the person who ignores my remembrance, my dhikr. So that refers to all kind of dhikr. Coming to the masjid, coming to speeches, coming to dhikr majlis, coming to those things which are obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he turns away without any valid reason, without any genuine reason, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دُنْكَ Forget the hereafter, even in this world, Allah will give a very constrained life to this person. He'll go through a hard life. So in this Imam Shawaliullah Muhaddis Dehli Rahmatullah is saying to us that this is one type of fitna. And this is what's happened. That Thumma qasat qulubukum min ba'di dhalik fahiyya kal hijarati wa shaddu qaswa wa inna min al hijarati lama yatafajjaru minhu la nahar wa inna minha lama yashakku fa yakhruju minhu al ma wa inna minha lama yahbitu min khashyatillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are three types of stones. There are those stones that Water gushes forth and it makes streams and canals and rivers and oceans. And from there, those stones, there are those boulders, those stones, the rocks, that water gushes forth and it trickles. So the second level. The third, there's no water coming out. But Out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it rolls. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Oh human being, you're not even any of these categories. Summa qasat qulubukum. Your hearts have become even more harder than that. So that's why Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that once we were sitting, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned about Jannat and Jahannam. Sahaba Ikram started to cry. So he said, I couldn't cry. I went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa complaining regarding my hard-heartedness. That how can I cure this heart, this diseased heart? So the Prophet sallallahu replied in a beautiful way. He said, Jumudul Aini min qaswatil qalb. The Jumudul Ain. That the lack of tears is due to hard-heartedness. Wa qaswatul qalb min kathrati zunub. And this hard-heartedness is because of excessive sinning. A person excessive sinning. In the hadith he mentioned, إِذَا أَذْنَبَ abdu dhamban. فَكَانَتْ نُكْتَةٌ سَوْدَاءُ فِي قَلْبِهِ When a servant of Allah, he commits a sin, a black spot falls on his heart. فَإِنْ زَادَ زَادَتْ If he continues to commit the sin, these black spots, he continues. وَإِنْ تَابَ سُقِلَتْ قَلْبُ If he does tawbah, if he repents sincerely, his heart becomes polished. But if he continues to sin, فَذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ His heart becomes completely roasted. Then what happens is, خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمِعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةً That he has become sealed, his eyes, his ears, everything is concealed. And what happens then? سُمُّمْ بُكْمُنْ عُمْيُنْ فَهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ Become spiritually deaf, dumb and blind. So he's physically is okay. There's no problem. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي السُّدُّ He's not blind from the eyes, he's blind from the heart. He's got the eyesight but not the insight. He got the basarat, not the basirat. This is a situation that happens. So the point here is, 
This heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this qad aflaha. Indeed, without a doubt, a person who has purified this heart, he is the one who is successful. So there are so many spiritual illnesses. If we start to talk about the different illnesses, then obviously there's so many. One of the main illness, which is the root of all illness, is pride, <coughs> arrogance. And these illnesses, what happens is, a person who has pride in himself, then this will cause so many other kind of illnesses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if a person doesn't purify his heart, like in one Quranic verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَرْحَمُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُقْلَبُونَ يُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Some of the Mufassir mention here that يُعَذِّبُ بِالْحِرِسِ Allah punishes that person with the hirs. وَيَرْحَمُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَرْحَمُ بِالْقَنَاعَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows mercy through contentment of the heart. So a person doesn't realize that even whilst living in this world, a person is going through so many different kind of trials and tribulations because we haven't purified the heart. A person, he's always wanting more. Hakim ulumma shaykh ashraf ali tani rahimahullah ta'ala subhanallah. He says that we all purchase houses, we live, either we have our own houses or we rented or whatever. But a person, when he is going to a house, when he moves into a house, when he purchases a house, what are the maqasid? What are the objectives? What are the objectives of purchasing a house? So, obviously, Hazrat Hakim Ulumma Shaykh Ashraf Ali Tanwi Rahmatullah Alayhi, he says there are four maqsad. And listen to this very carefully. It's not only for house, you can apply that for everything. Whenever we want to do something, we have to do the soul searching. We have to reflect. We have to contemplate and ponder why are we doing this thing for. So he gives an example of a house. That if a person, he wants to purchase a house. So first main objective is rahaish. For accommodation. He wants to purchase a house so he could live. He's got no, he's homeless. Or he's living in somebody else's house, he's living in a rented property, whatever, he wants to move into a house. So first is a rahaish, accommodation. And accommodation, obviously, that could be even a hut, it could be a tent. And we see millions of people, our Muslim brothers and sisters living around the world, they don't even have tents. They don't even have any shelter over themselves. So rahaish is the minimum requirement. A person, he purchases a house, he buys a house, he builds a house, he constructs a house for the objective of rahaish. Of living in that house. So whether it's a hut, whether it's a tent, at least it will safeguard him from rain, it will safeguard him from the heat of the sun, it will safeguard him from the wind. So he buys it for that reason. That's the first. Secondly, sometimes he thinks to himself that accommodation is sufficient, but there's other things that I need with it. Secondly, why do I purchase a house? Asaish. Asaish means to make things easy for him. So basically, he's got a hut. <laughs> He's got a tent, but he's thinking to himself, the rain is still coming inside. Because it's not strong enough. It's not strong enough. It's not waterproof. There's still so much problems in this house. So many problems. So basically, what he wants is asaish. Asaish means comfort. So for that, what he does is, he builds it with proper bricks, concrete, with cement. So asaish. So that's no problem as well. If he's got that intention, that's okay. Third is Araish. Araish is, he's got the house, the hood, or he's got his building, he's got his house, and he's got all the bricks, and he's got the cemented, everything. But there's no paint, there's no wallpapers, there's no carpets. So this is Araish. So he beautifies the house. Even that, there's no problem with that as well. So if he gets a house, he builds it with pure concrete and plasters and everything and then on top of that he beautifies it he paints it he puts wallpaper he gets the carpets he gets the curtains and he beautifies his house that's no problem that's araish so what was the first one rahaish second one is asaish third one is araish all these three there's no problem the problem comes in the fourth one which is namaish what is Namaish? To display the beauty or to, do, to 
compete with other people, to show off to people, to exhibit th that you are excel than the other people. So that's numaish, to display everything as an, like an exhibition. That people when they come, they don't only say it's beautiful. I personally myself will think to myself that no, my house outstands, is standing out in front of all the other houses. So in this, on this street, my house is the best. It's got a beautiful garden, it's got unique doors, it's got unique garden, it's got unique gates, and it's got the, my name written on it as well. This is Khan family, this is Islam family, this is Patel family, this, that. So basically that's Numaish, and that's not permissible. So in everything, that's just, Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah gives an example of a house, but that's to do with all the things. You want to go and purchase some clothes for yourself, for food or anything else. Always these four things, if we keep that in mind, the four words, the Rahaish, the Araish, Asaish, and Numaish. So if it's for Numaish to show off, Man salla yurai faqad ashrak, wa man tasaddaqa yurai faqad ashrak, wa man sama yurai faqad ashrak. A person who does it to show off, then he has committed shirk. So a person needs to keep that in mind. That if we want to cure our hearts, we need to take that pride and arrogance away from it. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر That person will not enter paradise who has a mustard amount of pride in himself. Then a person said إن رجل that one person is he says that يحب أن يكون ثوبه حسن ونعله حسنا that a person he likes to see that his clothes is clean is good and he wants to see his shoes good as well. So is that okay? The Prophet sallallahu said, "Inna Allah jamil yuhibbul jamal." Indeed, Allah is beautiful. He likes beauty. There's no problem with that. But what is pride? Al kibru batrul haq wa ghamtun nas. Pride is batrul haq. You deny the truth. You reject the truth. Wa ghamtun nas. You belittle people. Batrul haq. The first. The definition of pride. So a person tells you, brother, you should keep a beard. Who are you to tell me? Brother, you should keep your trousers above your ankles. Because the hadith says, Ma asfala min al min al izarfa fin nar. The part of the clothes which is below the ankles, <coughs> that will burn in the fire of Jahannam. Who are you to tell me? I don't do it with takabbur. You don't tell me. So this is batrul haq. So this is a sign of pride. Wa ghamtun nas. And belittling people. He didn't say ghamtul muslim. Ghamtun nas. So even... To belittle a non-Muslim is not permissible as well. That's why Hakim Ulam Shaykh Ashwali Tani Rahmatullah says that I always think about myself that I'm lower than all the Muslims. I am much more lower in status than all the Muslims at present. And in terms of the future, I am even lower than the disbelievers. Why? It is possible that these people, they accept Iman and they become believers and they become better than me. Subhanallah. If a person can keep that in mind, then this pride and arrogance will go. That a person thinks to himself that I am the lowest of the low. Somebody announced in the masjid that the person who is the worst in this masjid, let him come quickly outside on the entrance. Immediately, Junaid Baghdadi rahimahullah ta'ala, he was the first one out. And in essence, in reality, he was the most pious. So the point here is, that's why Allama Sayyid Sulaiman Nadwi rahimahullah ta'ala, when he went to meet Hazrat Tanwi rahimahullah ta'ala and he wanted to take bay'ah, Hazrat Tanwi rahimahullah said, scholar of your caliber, you want to take bay'ah to me? Because he was from Nadwa. And Nadwa ulamas, they thought to themselves they're much more greater than the ulama of Deband in terms of knowledge. So for him to come over, that was something strange and amazing. And when the people of Nadwa, they realized that he has gone, they were so sad that you... Uh, you, uh, caliber of your caliber scholar of your caliber went there the next day they actually took out the newspaper in black showing that they were so sad that he has gone but when he went and he asked him that what is the sawuf he asked him what is the sawuf he said you asking a big scholar of your caliber asking a student like me as a tanwi subhanallah the tawazu and ikhlas these people had so okay i will tell you what my teachers have taught me it's the sawuf is when a person thinks he's nothing, he's everything. And when he thinks himself he's everything, he's nothing. 
So very important point here is to achieve piety is for us. And to think you are pious, that's haram. Have you understood this? It's very deep. To try to achieve piety and become pious, that's for us. To, that's what we're here for. Try to achieve it. But to perceive, to think that you are pious, then that's haram. فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Don't try to purify yourself. Only Allah knows who's the most pious. So it's a very important point. Today in the morning when we put on the phone, we realized that subhanAllah, one of the great scholars of Bangladesh, actually two, one was Mawlana Ahmadullah. He was the son of Hazrat Muhammadullah Rahmatullah. When I was, just last week, I was in Deband, Madrasa, and then we went to visit all the different places. So we went to Tanabon, Hazrat Tanu Rahmatullah's place, and it reminded me of the incident of Mawlana Ahmadullah Rahmatullah, who just passed away today. His father was Mawlana Muhammadullah Rahmatullah, who was famously known as Hafiz Huzur Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So he, subhanAllah, after he graduated from Dalum Deban, he went to meet Hazrat Tanu Rahmatullah. And when he met, the object, the reason why he went there was to purify his nafs, nafs to cure the, the diseases of the nafs. So he went and after introducing himself that I want to purify myself, he goes, okay. He looked at him, these were the hakims, these were the physicians of this ummah. So he looked at his face and he said, you got pride in yourself. You got pride in yourself. So obviously these were the true servants, these were the true murids. So they said, Hazrat, that's the reason I've come for. So he goes, okay, this is the prescription. What's the prescription? That you sort out the shoes of the people who come into the masjid, straighten the shoes. They will leave the shoes everywhere. You straighten the shoes, you put it in the shoe racks. That's one thing. And secondly, after every salah, you stand up and you make an announcement that, oh, Musalliyan, oh, the people, worshippers, please do dua for me. I got pride in myself. Just imagine if I told you, somebody, your sheikh told you to do that. He said, I said, my bayaf with you is finished. But these people, they were the true muris, they were true seekers of spirituality. They wanted to cure this diseased heart. So he continued doing this for two weeks. After two weeks, he went to meet the sheikh. And subhanAllah, when I went to Tanabon, I looked at this khanqa. Amazing, there were small rooms. And the space was enough for a person, if he sleeps, he won't be able to move too much. And these were the rooms, the person who, mashallah, who was showing us around, he said, these are the rooms where the Grand Mufti, Mufti Azam, Mufti Shafi Sir Rahmatullahi stayed. Qari Muhammad Tayyib Sir Rahmatullahi stayed. Mula Masiullah Khan Sir Rahmatullahi stayed. Allama Sayyid Sulaiman Nadwi stayed. All these big, big scholars, these, they had their own small, small, and hujra, small chambers. That all day long, they were given all the ma'amulas, they were given all the spiritual uh, uh, any remedies to follow and the spiritual prescriptions to follow. And then when they came and one after the other, they actually managed to eradicate all these illnesses from themselves and they went back subhanallah uh, guiding the whole of the nation like Hazrat Mufti Shafi Rahmatullah one each scholar subhanallah they guided millions of people so this Muhammadullah Rahimahullah Ta'ala Hafizu Rahmatullah alayhi, so he did this for two weeks after two weeks when he went he said to him that half of the pride is gone still there's half left so he did it for another few weeks and after that he came Alhamdulillah this illness of yours is gone and that illness is the last thing that goes from a person because everybody wants to think to themselves, no, I'm something. So subhanAllah, the amazing thing is, I, when I was young, he came into the UK. Muhammad al he came to the UK in 1985. I was doing my hibs at that time and he came into Tawakkuliya Masjid. And obviously this incident of his, I read afterwards when I was in Mishkat al-Bukhari. And when I put these two together and I realized this person, subhanAllah, I still can... Uh, recognize the way he came into the masjid I could still remember that he had a tasbih on one hand he had a staff the stick on the other hand and he came to the masjid subhanallah at that time when he went in there was pin drop silence every the person the scholar who was on the member he stayed away came down and he uh, the sheikh went forward and I realized that subhanallah the tawazu these people had the nur on the face which is amazing. And this same person, subhanAllah, millions of people of Bangladesh and different parts of the world, they benefited from this person. So this is the thing, when a person is spiritually cleansed, when a person is spiritually cleansed, then his situation is completely different. Hazrat Hakimullah Mashaykh Ashraf Ali Tanwi Rahmatullah says, if two person comes to me, and he says two scholars, if they come, one is spiritually cleansed, the other one isn't, immediately I'll know by just looking at them. 
So this is the thing that we have to realize how important. And he says, to do your Islam is farz ayn. It's not farz kifaya that some people do, others don't do it. No, this illnesses that we have, we have to get rid of these illnesses. Like the, the hadith is saying that la yadkhulul jannah. These people will not enter paradise. Who've got man kana fi qalbi mithqala dhurratun min kibr. That who's got a mustard amount of takabbur inside. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yuhibbul mustakbirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those people who have takabbur inside them. And the word istikbar comes for those people, they don't really have something big or something to show off, but they pretend. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yuhibbu fayla mudara. He doesn't love them now in the present time, neither will he love them in the future until this takabbur is not gone. For him is only the highness. Lahu, those people know Arabic. Something which comes before, supposed to come afterwards, if it comes like that, that gives the thing of exclusiveness. So, in other words, only highness is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody else. That's why he says in a hadith Quds narrated by Imam Abu Dawud rahmatullah alayhi ibn Majah, he says, Al kibriya uridai. Well, Azmatu Izari. Kibriya, the highness is my upper garment. And well, Azmatu Izari and Azmat, my majesty, is the lower garment. Faman Nazaani, the person who wants to take anything from them, any of these cloak, any of these garments, Qazaftuhu Finnar, I will throw him into the fire of Jahannam. So this pride. Subhanallah, we need to get rid of it. That's why it reminds me of the incident of Mutarif rahimahullah ta'ala. He saw this youngster, Yazid ibn Muhallab, and he said to him, he was walking in a very haughty way, in a boastful way, with his chest out, stamping his feet on the ground. And he said to him, oh my son, you don't walk like this. So he replied back, don't you know who I am? Because yes, definitely I know who you are. And he gave this beautiful words which was engraved with gold. Subhanallah. And if we can get this in our mind, then this pride and arrogance will completely go. What did he say? Awaluka nutfatun qadira wa akhiruka jifatun madira wa anta bayna dalika hamilu adira. Your beginning is that you are an impure semen. Wa akhiruka jifatun madira. Your ending is that you decompose dead body. Wa anta bayna dalika hamilu adira. And in between you are carrying waste in your body. This is the reality of every single one. Qutila al-insanu ma akfara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, man be destroyed, ma akfara. How ungrateful he is. Min ayyi shay'in khalaqa. Doesn't even realize what thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created from. Min nutfa. From that impure semen. That if he comes out of the body, he has to have a faraz ghusl. If he touches his clothes, he has to wash his clothes. If he touches his body, he has to wash his body. And he doesn't even realize. Hal ata'a ala al-insani hinum min ad-dahri lam yakun shay'an madhkura. A time has come upon the people. Doesn't he realize that he wasn't even worth mentioning? Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum. La ta'alamuna shay'a. Wa ja'ala lakum ussama'a wa la baswara wa la afidata la'allakum dashkun. Allah says he has taken you out of the wombs of your mothers. La ta'alamuna shay'a. You didn't have no understanding. You didn't have the faculties of listening or of seeing or understanding anything. Allah gave you all this. Why? La'allakum dashkurun. So you could be grateful. Person doesn't realize. So that's why these illnesses that we have, we need to work on them. And if we can ponder over these words, the words of Mutarif rahimahullah ta'ala, the words of Hazrat Thani rahimahullah ta'ala, that keeping that in mind, if a person keeps that in mind, that how can we mock people? Like Luqman alayhi salatu was someone, somebody mocked at him. He said, Ma akbaha hadha al waju, how ugly is your face? And what a beautiful reply he gave back. He said, Ata'ibu bihadha ala naqshi awal al naqash. Are you finding a fault at the pattern of the pattern maker? The fashion of the fashion maker? The design of the designer? If a person thinks deep in that way, Allahu Akbar, you'll never ever look down on somebody. Because any single person has got disability, whether it's mental disability, whether it's physical. It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're pointing a finger at somebody, you are actually finding fault in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اِخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ From the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He has given us different languages. We all speak different dialects and languages. وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ Different colors of skin. These are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one verse. Another verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَحْزِئُونَ 
say, are you mocking at Allah and his signs? Then after this verse, Allah says, لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم Don't make any excuses. قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم Indeed, you have displeased after your iman. So now put these together. Let us put these two things together. What happens? If a person mocks at somebody because of his color, because of his language, and we do that all the time. We make fun of people's language. We make fun of people's appearances, his disposition, his color, his way he talks, the way he walks. We make mockery of this. Then what happens is لا تعتذر قد كفرتم. Those who understand Arabic, قد indeed without a doubt, قد كفرتم بعد after your iman. Ha, you were believer before, but not now after you said this statement. Do toba, renew your iman, renew your nikah. This is how dangerous it is. Somebody wrote a letter to Hazrat Anwar Rahimahullah Taala from Bangladesh. Obviously, the language Urdu, he wasn't familiar with the Urdu, so he says ham hasta hai. In other words, gives the cure for this that we laugh too much, excessive laughter. And this is nowadays, like Salahuddin Ayyubi rahimahullah ta'ala subhanallah, these people, they had objective in life. What did he say? He said, until I don't conquer Baytul Maqdis, I'm not going to chuckle, I'm not going to smile, I'm not going to laugh. He had this intention, he had this firm intention in his mind. So this kathratu dih tumitul qalb, excessive laughter kills the heart. And nowadays when we sit in a gathering, we laugh and we chuckle and we make fun of people and all these things. So the point here is a person, Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah Alayhi, he was sitting in the gathering, somebody from the gathering is, and he laughed. And he said, these people don't even know any language. They don't even know Urdu properly. He said in a very sarcastic way, because tumara iman jane ka khatra hai. Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah says, it's a chance of you losing your iman. How serious it is. So we need to realize that this heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, if he's not purified, this person is completely, he will be unsuccessful, he will be destroyed. So we need to cleanse our hearts from all these different kind of illnesses. And if we can start from now the humility, if we can have this humility in our life, subhanallah, that will make everything easy for ourselves. And if we can remember the prescription Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah given, that always think to yourself that you are the lowest of the law. And regarding the future, a person thinking that even these disbelievers, that in terms of this, Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah Ali says, hate the sin, not the sinner. Hate the fisk, not the fasik. Hate the kufr, not the kafir. I was invited to do a lecture in the prison, in York prison. So in that, what happened was the murderers and the rapists, they were all there as well. And the murderers, they started to jump up and down. They said, Sheikh, we want to ask you a question. So the prison officer said, calm down, calm down. You know, what, what's wrong with you people? So they said, no, no, we want to ask this question. We've been waiting for the Sheikh to come. So he goes, can we kill the rapist? So just imagine that kind of question. And they got so angry. They said, why are you asking this question? So I said, okay. They've asked the question, let me answer it now. So I said to them, look, the, po the, prob the, the point here is we have to remember that you hate the act, not the perpetrator. Not the person who's made, done the action. So you hate the sin. The rape itself is haram, it's, it's very big sin, it's the worst kind of sin. But the person, if he does sincere toba, he, he will be forgiven. If a person is a kafir, if he committing kufr, if he... Uh, brings iman then he's forgiven so you hate the kufr you hate the sin not the sinner you hate the murder not the murderer so how do you do this like many people ask how can this be possible because many times a person who doesn't read salah we hate him as well so he give, Hazrat Tanwi gives a very beautiful example he says if your own child he's got some black spot or he's put some paint over his face or some kind of ink over his face so the mother will not say I'm completely out of the house throw the the child out of the house no never the mother will never do that what will happen is the mother will clean the child and that child will move and he beloved to that mother again so in the same way this person he doesn't read salah brother when the day you read namaz mashallah you're going to be my beloved the day you're going to be keeping the beard mashallah you're going to be my beloved so that action that he does the sin that's wrong but if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislike the kafir then nobody will accept iman Nobody will have the ability, the strength to accept Iman. So Allah hates the kufr. Allah doesn't hate the kafir. 
as Muslims, we need to do the same thing as well. We hate the sin, not the sinner. So we have to start to work on the heart. Let us sit down today, go home and think to ourselves that the definition of kibr, have we got these illnesses? Have we got the symptoms in our hearts? Al-kibru batul haq wa ghamtul nas. If we have, how can we get rid of them? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the true understanding of deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to act upon what has been said. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب